wines representing the characters. Even for those who don't look for symbolism in movies, there's one that is quite obvious. Miles and Jack, as well as the two women characters, are represented by a type of wine. For Miles, this is shown first when he describes Pinot Noir to Jack. Pinot's a very thin skin grape. It doesn't like constant heat or humidity. Very delicate. Pinot Noir is clearly a metaphor for Miles' personality. Miles shows how thin-skinned he is. He can easily go into a bad state of mind with seemingly very little prodding, such as when Jack tells him that his wife remarried, or when the publisher turns down his book. Miles gets even more descriptive about Pino on the porch with Maya, thus revealing more about himself. It's a hard grape to grow, as you know, right? It's, uh, it's thin skin, temperamental, ripens early. It's, you know, it's not a survivor like Cabernet, which can just grow anywhere and uh, thrive even when it's neglected. No, nah, Pinot needs constant care and attention. You know, and in fact, it can only grow in these really specific little tucked away corners of the world. And, and only the most patient and nurturing of growers can do it, really. Only somebody who really takes the time to understand Pino's potential can then coax it into its fullest expression. And then, I mean, oh, its flavors, they're just the most haunting and brilliant and thrilling and subtle and ancient on the planet. We know Miles is a wannabe writer, and it's interesting how even in casual conversation, he is quite poetic and descriptive. Note too that Maya's response is equally profound, suggesting she is a good match for Miles. This little speech not only indicates Miles' complexity, he is also admitting he can be a great writer and a better person if he ever met the right woman. His ex-wife clearly wasn't that person, as that relationship put Miles into a depression. Here, Miles is metaphorically wondering if Maya would be that right person who could nurture and coax him to his fullest. The speech also refers to Cabernet, or more specifically, Cabernet Sauvignon. Guess who that is? Jack seems to be able to adapt anywhere and in any situation. He can act, do voiceover work, is willing to learn his future father-in-law's profession. He even at one point considers becoming a grape farmer. He likes every wine he tastes and every woman he sees. Whatever situation he'll adapt, he is the survivor that Miles is talking about. Going back to Maya, Maya appears to be very interested in Miles. Perhaps she is that right person that Miles so badly needs. She is after all studying horticulture. That's a very nurturing profession. The restaurant she works at is named The Hitching Post, so that's probably a clue as well. This question is essentially answered before the porch scene when they discuss a certain wine that Miles owns. I've got things I'm saving, definitely. I guess the star would be a 1961 Cheval Blanc. You've got a 61 Cheval Blanc and it's just sitting there? Yes, I do. Go get it. Okay. I'm serious. <laughs> Hurry. I would, I would. I mean, I think the 61s are peaking right now, aren't they? At least that's what I've read. No, that's right, yeah. It might be too late already. What are you waiting for? Maya is that 1961 Cheval Blanc. Maya is played by Virginia Madsen, and can you guess what year she was born? She is metaphorically telling Miles that she's the one for him, and she's ready now. Stephanie is Cabernet Franc. Listen to how Miles describes the wine. Well, I will tell you something. I've come never to expect greatness from a Cab Franc, and this one is no different. It's kind of a hollow, flabby, overripe. I don't know. It tastes pretty good to me. Stephanie, while not dumb, is rather shallow and doesn't possess the qualities Miles needs. However, she's fine for Jack. To sum up, Miles is Pinot Noir. Complex, needy, but full of potential. Jack is Cabernet Sauvignon. 
straightforward and agreeable to anything or any situation. Stephanie is Cabernet Franc, likable, but nothing special. Finally, Maya is the 1961 Cheval Blanc, a rare and very special wine. Now we know the characters, we'll dig a little deeper. A Geography Lesson Actually, before we go into the story more, let me give a brief geography lesson for those who aren't familiar with California and its wine-producing regions. The story starts out in San Diego, where Miles drives north to West Los Angeles to meet up with Jack, approximately 130 miles. Jack and Miles stop in Oxnard, where Miles' mother lives. The next day, they drive to Buellton, where they stay the week. Buellton is in what is known as the Santa Barbara County Coastal Wine Region. Note that it is approximately 360 miles south of the more well-known Napa and Sonoma Valleys. Just thought I'd clear that up as I often see reviews and discussions about sideways, and many seem to think that Miles and Jack are in Napa or Sonoma. Nope. The Light and the Dark So, which one do you like better? Oh, uh, well, I like them both. But um, if pressed, I would have to say that I prefer the dark. Miles is in a state of conflict. He can't quite decide for sure if he prefers the light or the dark, but believes he prefers the dark. His depression over his divorce has put him in a dark state of mind, so he seems to be on edge throughout most of the movie. Incidentally, his ex-wife, Victoria, is a brunette, and serves as a symbol of the dark, which makes Miles' new love interest, Maya, a blonde, a symbol of the light. She's a fucking waitress in Buellton, Jack. How is that ever gonna work out? However, Miles does not yet realize that he really prefers the light, and he shows almost no interest in Maya when he first sees her as a waitress wearing white. However, later that evening, when she is in black and smoking a cigarette, Miles invites her over to sit with him and Jack. Just try to be your normal humorous self, okay? The guy you were before the tailspin. Do you remember that guy? People love that guy. Come here, Miles. Come here. Do not sabotage me. If you want to be a oh. fucking lightweight, then that's your call. But do not sabotage me. Oh, aye, aye, Captain, you got it. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. Oh, no, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any fucking Merlot! Do not drink too much. Do you hear me? I don't want you passing out or going to the dark side. No going to the dark side. OK. At first, Pinot Noir is the only red wine that Miles seems to like. He brushed off the Cabernet Franc he got from Stephanie. He dismisses Cabernet Sauvignon. Obviously, he has real issues with Merlot. We know that Stephanie is represented by Cab Franc and Jack the Cabernet Sauvignon, so actually, Miles' love of Pinot Noir shows his self-indulgent side. However, Miles really likes the Sauvignon Blanc that Maya is drinking, and he admitted earlier that he likes white wines as well as reds. I thought you hated Chardonnay. No, no, no. I like all varietals. I just don't generally like the way they manipulate Chardonnay in California. Too much oak and secondary malolactic fermentation. This might be a stretch, but I think you can interpret that little comment as a knock on California blondes being manipulative and artificial. Well, then again, maybe it's not such a stretch when you consider Stephanie's boorish, chain-smoking blonde mother, Carol, at the bowling alley. Notice how Miles seems to be in good spirits early on in the date when he is drinking the white fiddlehead Sauvignon Blanc. Notice how his mood darkens again when the wine changes to Pinot Noir. In drinking Pinot, he's being self-indulgent, and he ends up calling Victoria. Calling his ex-wife is only going to make him feel sorry for himself, but that's where Miles is at this point. What is with Miles and Merlot? Merlot is a dark red wine, so why would Miles object to it so strongly? Just like Miles, Jack, Maya, Stephanie, and Carol, Victoria is represented by a wine, and that wine is Merlot. Now let's look at Maya. She's a Cheval Blanc, and looking at Wikipedia, we can see that Cheval Blanc is a mixture of primarily Cabernet Franc and Merlot. 
These two wines are commonly used for blending. They are also represented by Stephanie and Victoria, respectively, meaning they don't stand out like, say, a Cheval Blanc would. These are red wines. So why is this wine white or Blanc? Miles answered this question already. How come it's white? Oh, Jesus. Don't ask questions like that up in wine country. They'll think you're some kind of dumb shit, OK? Just tell me. Color in red wines comes from the skins. So, Cheval Blanc is white because the skins were removed. So basically, Maya has traits of Stephanie, the Cabernet Franc, and Victoria, the Merlot, but with the dark side removed. I told you she was special. Miles drives a red Saab. This is not a particularly common vehicle one sees on the road, so it's notable when you see a second black one in the background when Jack first brings up how he wants to get Miles laid. If you look carefully, you'll see a man and a woman getting out of it. It's like some dark reflection of Miles and Victoria had they stayed together. The whole trip is marked by titles stating what day of the week it is. The first one we see is Saturday, the day the trip began, and the last one is the following Saturday, the day of Jack's wedding. Note how every title has a black background except for Thursday, the morning Miles woke up with Maya. This was the one day of the trip that began with Miles not in a depressed or dark state of mind. Of course, things go awry that day and we're back to the black background the following Friday. 